The next point I want to make is that life extension is likely to come creeping up on us. We are very unlikely ever to be asked by a politician or indeed by a scientist, do you want life extension, yes or no? And we'll do what you want. What will happen, what is happening, from the evidence you've just heard, is that life extension is likely to come on the back of therapies for all sorts of things that are so unpleasant, we're desperate to have them treated, whether they are Alzheimer's or uh, heart disease or cancer or whatever it is. So the doctor is likely to come and say to you, well, I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is I can cure what's wrong with you. The bad news is that I'm going to use a method, like possibly regenerative medicine, which will completely regenerate the uh, bodily system that's gone wrong, or maybe genetic cures. The bad news is that the very treatment I use will extend your life. I am so sorry. Well, I don't think people will worry too much about that unwanted side effect. And therefore, willy-nilly, we will accept life extension because it will come as part of treatments that we badly want because they will ameliorate suffering and, of course, extend lives. And finally, I'm being admirably brief. I hope you will congratulate me for this. My chairman wanted me to mention one argument that is sometimes raised in these contexts. I've never seen any merit in it, but I will uh, help you to dismiss it if I can. And that is that uh, it's sometimes said that living beyond three score and ten is unnatural and possibly is helping people to play God. Well, you should have tried telling that to my 93-year-old mother-in-law. She would have had none of you trying to persuade her that she had already lived a naturally long life. No sane person wants what's natural. If there's anybody in this room who has a preference for the natural over the unnatural, I recommend that you abandon it instantly. Most of the nasty things, quite a few of the nice ones too, but most of the nasty things are perfectly natural. Bacteria, perfectly natural. Viruses, perfectly natural. Cancer, perfectly natural occurring phenomenon. You don't want to be a victim of the natural if you can possibly avoid it. What we have to do, because it's a great thing that we have, we human persons, we can choose. We have to be selective. We have to accept those things that are part of the natural, which are good for us and for others, and we have to reject and combat as vigorously as we can the disastrous effects of our natural inheritance, whether it is the, in the environment out, outside or whether it is part of our uh, genetic um, inheritance. So, we will abjure the natural. We will willy-nilly find that this... 2.5 years per decade, was it, is, uh, is going to creep up on us. And if you just multiply that up, you will soon get to a few thousand years, um, assuming the world continues to exist and the dire predictions of the president of this learned society, Martin Rees, do not come about and we are not squashed by an asteroid or something like that. But in due time, inexorably, we will find that people like you and me, or our successors, are living longer. Such a pity that in the 350th anniversary of the Royal Society, we don't have some of the original fellows to give presentations here. Thank you very much.